Amen. This is God praise for the worship team tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, it's a great privilege <laughs> to welcome up a man that I've known all my life. <laughs> um, but I'm going to give my dad all the time he needs, Pastor Patrick. Let's welcome him up. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. So I've been asked to do a song tonight. I just want to thank Pastor Taylor for inviting me to come tonight. I hope you're fired up, you're stirred. And so this song is called Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Selector. Amen. Let's clap our hands in this place tonight. Come on. Like this. We're going to get down tonight on a Sunday night. Listen, man. It's good to get on fire for Jesus. So it goes like this. Listen up. Brand new song tonight. Brand new. Listen. Are you ready, church? Barry St. Edmonds, are you ready? Don't tune in. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Back in the days when I did was wrong, but I'm now glad to say that my days are gone. Gone forever right, don't realize the lucky and blind that a sinner, but my eyes been but who said Jesus did? Who put that through in your head? Stop being street cred. Jimmy me dirty, no, Jesus resurrected him. Resurrection power was keep me alive, and no good thing when I see it. Cause when he comes back, surprise. And when he dies, I will knock it for ten. Will it be tonight, tomorrow, by the next millennium? People waiting, people debating, anticipating, duplicating what the world's portraying. Am I relating? The world's so so hope has become a laughing joke. Like Warner Brother once said, that's all folks. Gotta keep Jesus in real, can't keep my lips sealed. Go in the world, preach a God, this is God's will. Cause I gotta serve, is I gotta cares. Tonight, really, really want you to share. Once you come part your life, that's the power of risen Christ. It's how true Christian trees survive. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. Now that I'm a Christian, want you all to come and listen. Something you've been missing. Here's a vision. Jesus has risen. Gotta reach out, Lord, so the sick of the cross. Get the course. And now and there forever you'll be lost. I don't want to rent a rape, but Jesus died since you could be saved. Died upon the cross, I'm not in the grave. That's why I'm here today. If you say something, you can say someone cute and take away the old and give you something brand new. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. I reign supreme, now my heart attract king, told to redeem Cause when nine years ago my life was tearing away the seams Some of me gave way, some of me had died, so I gave Jesus my sin against what so much price blew life into me Gave me a destiny, thank you Lord, never know how much I really meant to me November 92 is when my eyes knew by yours true Yeah, Jesus in your heart, I don't mean to intrude But it's a God that loves you, he sent his only begotten son Whoever would believe in him tonight would not perish but enter into the kingdom Waiting for an opportunity, been waiting for some time But you would be stored tonight, still gonna recline Only a fool says no, no Christ Bigger the forward jump there, right? This is right, the rent, the whole rest of your life. What will you say? What will you do? Ah, oh, mm, yes, you was going to then, did you? But it's not lost if you open your eyes and there's Jesus Christ. Make sure, my friend, your name's in the land book of life. Angels are in position there, win. Cause when the soul gets saved tonight, the Bible says they will be celebrating Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. When I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus, Jesus, when I say Jesus, you say Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, this Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, this Sunday night here is gonna rock with Jesus in your heart and God up above. You've got worries on their how to solve them. Give them to God, can he help? No problem, cause when you were down, how much can you take? Before it's you to the point, it's gonna be late. Take it to him first, when things seem worse. Pray to the Lord, don't eat your own words. Believe in his power, any day or hour. Praise him in the bed, praise him in the shower. This house will rock with a shot. Now all the negative thoughts have been blocked. I'm gonna keep chin, I'm gonna keep praising. Don't wanna be in, hear what I'm saying. So be like a father, lock all the doors. Why, why, why? 
because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise Jesus. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn to uh, Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. So Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. Let me catch my breath. I'm coming up nearly 54 now. Pastor Taylor asked me to bring my evangelism spirit tonight. Just so you know, I am a retired evangelist. I speak very spiritually, you know, and we've got Barry St. Edmunds tuned in tonight, so I'm sorry, guys. You're going to see me go crazy because I don't do this in, in Barry St. Edmunds, only, only, only tonight. And so um, I want to share with you a funny story. There was a, a man, he walked into a nightclub. That's it, that was the music he was hearing. And <laughs> very good sound effects. You guys are the best. And, and he walks in and the bouncers go, I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry, you can't come in. He said, why not? He said, you ain't got a tie, so you can't come in. He said, oh, come on. He said, no, you can't come in. So he goes off and all of a sudden he finds something on the street. And he finds... So he walks in and said, will this do? And the bounce said, you can come in as long as you don't start nothing. <laughs> you are a good church. You got that one. Anyway, talking about jump leads, jump leads are used to help a car that has a flat battery get going again. And so we use this famous quote when our cars broke down. Have you got any jump leads? Can you give me a jump start? Maybe tonight your battery or your faith has gone a little bit flat tonight. Or we need tonight, church, the Holy Ghost to come down in this service and to jump start us tonight. So our text Tonight is going to look at a man called Jeremiah. And because the bat beat or the word is on the street is that the fire in Jeremiah's heart is out. I'll let you work that out, Mr. Woolmer. He's got it. So let's look at why Jeremiah's heart was a bit flat and why he needed a jump start to lift up his spirits. How many know sometimes, I've been saved coming up 30 years now, There are times in your walk that you come to church on a Sunday night. I know we're a bit tired. I'm very tired. But how many know we just need a little jump start from time to time? Let's look at our word, Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was wary of holding it back, and I could not. I want to preach a sermon I've entitled, let's get it started in here. And so if we're going to get it started in here, then let me start with you with a little riddle to get the answer to my first point. One man said this, is the advance of man of its true selves. Its roots are inward, but its fruits is outward. It is our best friend or our worst enemy is more honest and more consistent than our words. It is an outward look based on our past experience. It is a thing which draws people to us or repels them. It's never content until it's expressed. It is the librarian of our past. It is the speaker of our present. It is the prophet of our future. What is it? The answer is our attitude. Now, how many people know tonight You can either have a right attitude or you can have a wrong attitude. And how many know a right attitude is being positive and not being negative? If you notice the jump leads that I have here, you have a red wire and you have a black wire. The black wire represents negative and the red represents positive. 
How many people know you cannot put a negative on a positive? You try jump starting a car and you put the black lead onto the red, you know what's going to happen. And so spiritually speaking, you should speak, you, you, God should speak to us tonight as a believer and realize, realize that we should be hooked up with a positive spirit. You cannot allow a negative spirit to be hooked up with a positive spirit. So maybe tonight you are in Jeremiah's shoes where you have become discouraged like him. Or in our text it says, Then I said, I will not make mention of his name nor speak any more in his name. Jeremiah is sulking here. He's in a bad place. It's possible that he's backslidden. He has lost his love. He has lost his first love. He doesn't want to be in ministry. He wants to come out. He, he's looking for an excuse. He quotes, I don't want to talk. I don't want to mention the name of Jesus. And that is it. And the danger behind this church is we can pick up this negative attitude where you've become wary like Jeremiah. Jeremiah tries to deny his savior he tries to put out the flame, but he couldn't because basically he just needed a jump start. Jeremiah was going through a hard time in his ministry. Some commentators put him as a pastor. So basically, as a pastor, he wants to give up and he wants to quit. Ever felt like quitting? Don't raise your hands. Just blink at me. And so... <laughs> I mean, no, it's bad enough a disciple giving up the faith. But as a pastor, you cannot give up your faith. A preacher quit the ministry after 20 years and became a funeral director. When asked why, he said, I ch he said, he changed. He said, I spent three years trying to straighten out John, and John's still an alcoholic. Then I spent six months trying to straighten out Susan's marriage, and she filed for divorce. Then I spent two and a half years trying to straighten out Bob's drug problem, and he's still an addict. Now, at the funeral home, when I straighten them out, they stay straight. <laughs> Jeremiah wants to quit the ministry. He tried not to speak God's word. He, he tried to block it out. He tried to pretend the word had no fire anymore. The only problem with Jeremiah's denial is our text declares that the word of God was like a fire shut up in his bone. A man of God needs to stay on fire. Even if you think you lose your fire, I've got news for you. Even when you backslide, even when you go, the Holy Ghost is still in you, whether you like it or not. Yes, you're backsliding. Yes, you left him. But how many know he hasn't left you? The fire can be risen up again. And my prayer tonight is maybe you're here tonight. Your battery has become flat. That's between you and God. I'm praying tonight that when the altar call comes, I don't have to come and jumpstart you. I don't have to come and twist your arm. I don't have to say those fancy words to get people saved. I've realized I've been doing altar calls for 30 years now, and the best altar call is when you just say, listen, if the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, you know you're bestling, you know you're not right, and I'm telling you now, I've seen more people get saved than me trying to pull the altar call, because what happens is that one person you want, you go for them, you go for them, and everybody else, I see that hand, I see that hand, put that hand down, I want this one, and everybody else gets saved apart from that one person, they just look at you and laugh, did you get me, did you? I like what John Wesley quoted. Let the preacher get on fire and the people will come and watch him burn. I don't know about you, but I'm on fire. Come on, somebody. Jeremiah was a good man, a man of God, and this preacher had lost his fire. Church, have you lost your fire? Jeremiah knows the truth. Jeremiah, he knows he's wrestling. We sing that song. It is a church song from our main text. We sing it in our churches. The word of God is like a fire. I'm not going to sing it. Like a fire shut up in my bones. I can't explain it. No, I can't contain it. Jeremiah needed a jump start, a little spark if you like. And so one spark in Jeremiah's dead spirit and one spark changed 
his negative mind and put Jeremiah back on fire. How many of you know that's encouraging tonight? That we read the horrible side of Jeremiah, a real side of Jeremiah. It is possible to lose the faith. It is possible to give up. But it is possible for the Holy Spirit to quickly get a hold of you and say, you don't want to go down this road, Jeremiah. The word was in his heart like a burning fire, shut up in his bones. He said, I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. He tried to show us. I tried to block it out. I tried not to mention his name, but the word of God was still on fire in my heart. And that's the hope tonight, church. Maybe tonight, church, all you need is a jump start. Just like Jeremiah, there was issues he was dealing with. He wasn't being positive. He was obviously being negative. And so the answer tonight is, church, you must be positive in your walk. And the hope of the message is to speak to those who are silently suffering tonight, like Jeremiah. I have used this illustration before, but I'm going to use it again. And so in life, sometimes we will see things that are negative. But the thing is, we can never see the positives. And so maybe Jeremiah wrote down all his negatives. I'm not happy with this and that. I'm not seeing breakthrough. What if God doesn't come through? What if it all goes wrong? Or I'm not happy. I'm not seeing victory. I'm not seeing breakthrough. The devil is defeating me. I'm cursed. What's the point of going to church? I mean, no, you can't just have a negative in life, but you're going to have to have a positive in life. My prayers do not fall upon deaf ears. My God is a God of breakthrough. I can break every curse. I can break every bondage. I am a child of God. I can claim every blessing. My God is a God who can turn my situation around. He is the God of yes and amen. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Great pastor. Thank you, Pastor Brick. Next time I go in a prayer room, you've just hit me with a revelation there. I'm going to go in a prayer room and I'm going to see my positives. Yeah, right. You wait when that disaster comes. You wait when that situation comes. You wait when that rebuke comes. You wait when financially you lose your job and things don't go to plan. This happens, this happens. I'll tell you what you will see. You will see nothing but negative. And the answer is you've got to see the positive in the negative. Okay, Pastor Brick. I'm looking at my negatives but, and I'm seeing the positives, but the problem is you put the positives still back there and you put your negatives there and all you're seeing is negative, negative, negative. You will speak negative, but I've got good news for you. All you've got to do is put a little hole in your negatives because when you put your hole through your negatives, you will see the positives. I see you. And that's the power of the Holy Ghost. But you've got to discipline your life to do that. That doesn't just come and happen overnight. That has been forged in areas in my life. I'm going to tell you now, I've gone through some terrible things. I might look like I've got it all together. Oh, yeah, look at him up on stage tonight, shirt, tie, so that's good. But I've fought some battles over the years. There's been times, probably in my heart, I had selfish thoughts, mad thoughts, crazy thoughts. Sometimes I did need rebuking, but I'll to tell you now, there's sometimes I didn't need rebuking. There will be misunderstandings. But the hope of the message is to speak to those who are silently suffering right now. Can you see the positive through your negatives? God will test your minds, but also he will test your hearts. Psalms 26.2 says, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. So basically, church, when you're positive, your mind is positive, then you have the right spirit. Then it will jumpstart your heart tonight, which leads me to my second point. Keeping our hearts on fire. 
And so from our text, the word of God is like a fire. Let's get it started in here tonight, church. I was armed with jump leads. Now, I'm armed with matches. I said, God, I need to bring something tonight to show these people that we need to stay on fire for Jesus. Now, that causes trouble. But this causes devastation. But when you ignite your heart with the Holy Ghost fire, I want to tell you, then we can really upset the world. Come on, somebody. We can get on fire. We can be stirred because we need to get it started here. We need the Holy Ghost. I am an official fire starter. And in the kingdom, we need fire starters. And one commentator said this, it is easy to determine when something is aflame. It ignites other material. Any fire that does not spread will eventually go out. Mm. What else needs to be ignited? Evangelism needs to be ignited. I'm coming up at the age of 54. I'm still saved, still on fire, still stirred. It sounds like a Dr. Dre song, doesn't it? Still outreaching on the streets, still preaching the gospel to everything that moves, still rapping, still tithing, still traveling the world, still the same fire that I had 30 years ago. But you know what? One commentator quoted, a church without evangelism is a contradiction in terms of, Just as a fire that does not burn is a contradiction. Come on, somebody. We need to start a fire in here tonight. So I feel like grabbing all of your negatives. I hope you didn't panic, Ushers. That was a trick. All right, that was what you call controlled. It's called vanishing paper. You like that one, didn't you, eh? Thank Peter Nash for that little trick. We need to start a fire tonight here in the Potter's House, Paddock Street. We all know when we look back in history, the most infamous fire was the Great Fire of London. Now I'm stirred. I'm so pleased I've done that illustration. I could feel the Holy Ghost fire right now. You thought, what the heck is going on here? Amen. I'm telling you now, we're going to start a fire in this place. Your pastor asked me to bring the fire. I brought the fire. Amen. So in the early hours of Monday, September the 3rd, 1666, 356 years ago, a fire broke out in Thomas Farriner's little bakery on Pudding Lane in the city of London. It caused such a fire that it wiped out half the city of London. The fire raged out of control for three days. Could you imagine a fire for three days of continuous fire? I know this fire brought devastation. I know this fire brought death. But this illustration stirred me of what happens when a fire gets out of control. I thought about us as a church church being on fire for Jesus and us causing a fire to spiral out of control well the outcome of that fire of the great london of the great fire of london it brought casualties but church we can start a fire tonight and i'm here to tell you the outcome amen Um, can cause such a wildfire, our flame can spark another flame, and the outcome can be the fire we spread can bring in the casualties because of those who have been burned in the world. How many know we are a hospital tonight? We are a hospital where people come in to get fixed up. Maybe you're here right now. You need healing in your body. Why can't you get healed while I'm preaching? Come on, somebody. 
I know we want the, the preacher or the evangelist to call you out and to lay hands on you. But can I tell you, I've seen more healing people in the service as they're being spoken to. And so the church is a hospital. People can be rescued from hell's flames tonight. Again, back to evangelism. Maybe you've lost your flame. Maybe you've lost those outreach nights. I think you outreach on Thursday nights, don't you? Let me stir you something. Get the matches. Come out on that Thursday night. Come out on that Saturday outreach. Tonight's message is here to encourage you. All we need is a spark to ignite a fire. That through that spark, the fire would spiral out of control. And instead of it bringing a disaster, it would bring a Holy Ghost revival. And it would last longer than three days. We may not be a baker's on Pudding Lane, but we are a church on Paddock Street. And I'm hoping this evening this message can set you on fire. Like the worship song, set me on fire once more. So I want to live my life to please you in every way. Set me on fire once more so the world can watch me burn for you. I want to tell you, the world needs to hear what we've got Now's not the time for wishy-washy Christians. Now's not the time to have a flat battery. Now's not the time. And listen, we've been in those seasons. You will have those seasons. And there's times I'm preaching to myself tonight. Sorry, I'm preaching to myself. Because there are times that we do speak doubt. Sometimes we do get angry. I'm not the perfect man. But I can tell you this. I get vexed. And I tell my church, I get so vexed sometimes. But I will not bring it in the next day. I'll get vets at night. I'll have it out with God in the prayer room, in my house, by my bed, four o'clock in the morning. God, I am really ticked off with this. We can start a fire that will spread from Norwich to other cities. We've done it once and the world. We can do it again, Mr. Butland. Brian Butland... It's good to see you're still on fire. Let me tell you something. I might be this bomb, but you need a little detonator. Brian Butland is a detonator. I dare you. Go on. Go on. Do it. If I told you what we'd done 17, 18, 20 years ago, we used to have cranes in the middle city center advertising our concert. We got enlarged in so much trouble. It was his fault that he had a great big huge lorry with a crane on it. You stick it outside City Hall and you go down in the marketplace, that's pretty high. And we had a 20 foot by 20 foot flyer advertising. We got the waterfront. We got the tall nightclub. Both of us. We got the Hollywood cinema, the big one with 400 people. He said, I'm not hiring that out on a Saturday night. Are you stupid? That's my main film. How much money do you make? He said, well, we get 200 people from the people we come in. I said, listen, mate, we're going to give you 300 pounds. Yeah, but what about all, all the money we make from the thing? I'm going to tell everybody that comes. We're going to have 100 people minimum. I'm going to tell everybody to buy a hot dog and a drink. I said, that's five pounds. Times that by 100, that's 500. Quit maths. That's 500, son. He said, you got it, you got it, and we got it. Norwich, we can take the world for Jesus. Again, Thomas Ferriner's bakery first started from a tiny little spark. One spark is all it took. Jeremiah, could you imagine if I just burnt down this roof? I'd actually do you a favor, Pastor Taylor. <laughs> now, let me tell you this. I got invited to Walthamstow. Ooh. Pastor Brown weeks brings me up the week before. I know it's short notice. Will you come and preach? Will you bring the fire? Will you tear this place upside down for us? I came. Friday night, the storms come. You know the 100-year storm that came? Well, it took the whole roof off with all the tiles, and I couldn't preach that night. I missed my opportunity. So at least you can tell Pastor Brown I didn't burn this building down. A fire that was spiral out of control. I wonder tonight, could we be the Thomas Farriner? I wonder tonight, us as a body, could we be a pudding lane? It's good to see people on fire for Jesus. Now, there are those who are on fire, but there are those who are also wrestling. Evangelism is a fire, if spread it, can bring a revival. Why the need to evangelize? One person quoted 
if we don't evangelize, we fossilize. Someone said this, all souls are equally precious, but not all are equally strategic. We need to be strategic. I, I do have a problem with that word, eh, but I couldn't share this testimony on Thursday night in my three-minute talk, and I was very good. I managed to say, thank you, Pastor Taylor. They closed me down. I got it in. Perfect. I've asked him tonight, they're watching right now in Barry St. Edmunds. There's a woman called Gwen I shared with her last year. She got saved. She's the mother of Heidi Napier. Her daughter got saved 35, 38, 39 years ago. They've been pastoring now for well over 30 years. She got saved last May. Her other half has never got saved. She came to me and said, I really want to see Brian get saved. And she, I said, listen, let's just pray. And I'm not saying this to try and get some glory. I do give words. And I called her out of a service and said, listen, God's going to open the door. And this is going to be your chance to witness to your family. I didn't say Brian, to your family. And I said, I don't just give words for the sake of it. I'm giving words because I really believe God just wants to show you. She was resting in her heart. I want certain family members. This woman, they have been praying for 30, 35 years. I think the ghosts would know them, know her very well. Never really got saved. But she's been coming every service since May last year, so in a year. Two weeks after I gave that word, it was near Christmas time. Brian has a heart attack. He gets rushed into hospital. And he dies. They bring him back. He dies again. They bring him back. She rings me up. I don't know what's happening. I said, is he still alive? She said, yeah. I said, Holy Ghost is moving. Three weeks later, Brian walked into our church. And he's been coming since Christmas. He's still alive. I was in New York City. Oh, no, forgive me. Tim Scott. I met him uh, four years ago before I got banned. I see um, Tim Scott, three other pastors. I said, guys, you know why it's not working in New York City? I said, okay, Mr. England guy, why ain't it working? I said, because I'm from Brixton, right? I'm from, you know, the West End is your Broadway. This is like, you know, the Bronx, the Brooklyn. This is like my Brixton. I, 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 I fit in like a glove here. This is my calling. I just think you're outreaching in the wrong place. And the pastors went, really? So where do you suggest, Mr. Brick? I said, right over there. You see that park over there? Right there. He said, let me tell you something. You will get shut down in less than three minutes. I promise you. I will give you $30 if you don't get shut down in three minutes. I said, you're on. So I went up, set up the speaker. About to start the music. I said, you got my $30, yeah? I said, I don't care what I'm about to do, you don't judge me, please. If I'm coming in here and I'm going to do a job, you don't judge me because I feel called to New York City. Honestly, hand on the heart, I wanted to pioneer in New York City. Many Americans have gone in there. I thank God for Americans. I don't want to belittle them, but they ain't getting it happening down there. So I set up my music. Within two minutes, the police were there. Hey, man, what you doing? So what do you think I'm doing? I'm trying to do my music here, you know. I said, so listen, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do my music. And he said, no, no, you turn that off right now. I am NYPD. I said, whoa, okay, okay. I said, well, listen, can I have a little word with you? I said, well, on the basketball court over there, I noticed there's some drugs going around, but that's between me and you. Don't say nothing. I think there's a Snoop Dogg over there. I think there's some gangsters over there, and I reckon I can reach them. He said, you reckon you could reach 
those gangsters on the basketball. And I'm not labeling them, but they were gangsters. But they were very good basketball players. But the best basketball players are gangsters. He said, let me get this right. You're going to do a song, and you're going to get one of those, what is it you call it? Saved. What does that mean? I said, I'm going to get one of them to come over here and, and stand next to me, and I'm going to lead him for a prayer, and he's going to ask Jesus to forgive him of his sins, and he's going to confess that he's a sinner. He said, oh, man. He said, you reckon you can do that? I said, well, I could, but my friends over there, because I've got a 30 pound, $30 bet with them, but they told me that you're going to shut me down. Now, I know you're a nice officer, and you're going to give me my three-minute shot. If I don't get one of those guys over there, now, I'm betting him $30. I know I can't bet with you because it looked like I'm bribing you. But if I get something to happen, you give me two hours in this park. He said, you are on. I said, Mr. Police Officer, um, can you clear off? What? I said, well, I'm not going to get anybody with you there, am I? Who's going to come and say, oh, yeah, I'm a sinner in front of a police? He said, well, how far do you want me back? I said, as far back as you can see me. He said, but I want to watch. I said, yeah, I know, but go far back. So he's walking back, walking back, walking back. Is that far enough? A bit more, a bit more, a bit more. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more. That's fine, that's fine. So he's a, he's a good distance. I would say probably from where, um, where the exit door is there. And so, yeah, the ice cream van was going off then in the park. Great sound effects, very good. So all of a sudden, I shouted out, people in this park, I want to lift up the NYPC. Is that where you've got NYPD? We love the New York police. We think they are wonderful. And he's looking at me. They are unbelievable. They do such a job in the city, and we need to recognize them, who they are. We love the NYPD. And we just want to lift them up. So I started rapping, started singing. Now, listen, you've got to be strategic. And I started rapping, and this is what happened. was able to do two hours in the park. I got $30. I got the police on my side. What more can a man ask for in life? A good witness is like a signpost. It doesn't matter whether it's old, young, pretty, ugly. It has to point the right direction and be able to be understood. We are witnesses to Christ. We point to him. God can heal you tonight. God can save souls tonight. I don't need to do a bet with Pastor Taylor because I don't think he would part with his money with me. But people, and I didn't mean it in that way. What I mean is he's not a betting man. Amen. People are burning and they're on their way to hell. You might feel like Jeremiah tonight. You may feel like giving up. Things might have gone wrong, but one spark can change that tonight. Amen. You might feel like Jeremiah tonight in our text, but the good news is something changed in Jeremiah. Whatever the spark was that ignited a fire in his heart, we need to claim that experience. Jeremiah had, had to have that spirit. Can I declare to you this evening, you cannot let the word of God be contained. The word of God is like a fire shut up in your bones. It's waiting to be released. Something can change tonight. Who remembers the concert we did? It was five years ago, four and a half years ago at the forum. We did the Grime concert. 
Okay, I haven't done a concert because I was always away as an evangelist. And Pastor Boy said, would you do a concert? I said, on one condition. We're going to start at 11 o'clock. We're going to go till 1, have a break, and we're going to work from 3 till 5 o'clock that whole day. I said, but we're not going to make it a church event. We're just going to look for people that want to be involved. It didn't take me long to get 30 people. Pat, man, we're into it. I'm doing the music on the street. Um, Pat, do you think that's a bit loud? I said, yeah, that's very loud. Um, do you think grime will work in this city? Yeah, grime will work in this city. Yeah, but this is Norwich, man. They're into rock and roll. I said, well, I go around the world and grime works. That night, I shared it last time. That night, that venue can only hold 100 people. Stephen Galt was my sound guy. I never saw a guy get so excited all my life. He was treating that sound as if it was lights. He was like, <laughs> getting the echo. That night, 80 people walked in. We had 60 people from the church. We had to kick out 40, people, 40 Christians out of the church. And one of them was Judy Stafford. I'm not leaving. I don't know what this grime is, but I love grime, and I want to stay for the grime. She was sitting, and I'll be honest with you, she didn't really come to many con I actually haven't seen her in a concert. I hope I got that right. And Judy, Judy refused to move. And that night, over 24, 25 people gave their life to Jesus. People said, man, that flyer, that flyer is powerful. How did you design it? Let me thirdly look with you. We have to have the right attitude. Now we have the fire. I've been armed with jump leads. I've been armed with matches. Now I'm armed with tablets. You've got to get a dose of the Holy Ghost tonight. Come on, somebody. And so... How many of you know, I believe what we need is God's pill. I mean, you've heard of the gospel, but we need God's pill. We've got to get a dose of the Holy Ghost. And so the fire that was in Jeremiah, I believe he took God's pill. His body is burning like a fire. He can't shut it out. And here's a pill. Here's a scripture that will give you the dose of the Holy Ghost. The word of God is like a fire. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I found this illustration and I decided to break this little, I don't know if it's a poem, but I decided to, every three sentences, I'm going to put, take God's pill. So I've, I've done it myself called take God's pill. When life is tiring, when you're struggling with your sin, when family members aren't saved, just take God's pill. When bills aren't paid, when school is difficult, when work is exhausting, just take God's pill. When your health is falling apart, when your loved ones are hurt, when the future is unsure, just take God's pill. When a good friend leaves, it's easy to be discouraged. Discouragement is a thief. Just take God's pill. It steals your vitality, your zeal, your joy, your peace, and your contentment. Just take God's pill. That's why... We need to jumpstart. Now, I started revival this January in Bury St. Edmunds. I told the church, for the first time, we are going to use this flyer. So you can show this first one up and keep it up there. I said, this flyer calls the revival in Norwich where 80 visitors came. I've outlined the bottom, Berrytown Football Club. 
I said, I let two pastors use this. They've been banned their concerts because Ministry of Sound came after them. But what they didn't realize is in the corner, it says Ministry of Sound. I took out the wire and put in an S and it's called Ministers of Sound. Does that mean there were ministers? So you can't get done for copyright. He was allowed to go ahead. He won't ban. For the first time in March the 19th, we are doing a concert with this flyer. We've got five dates on there. I've got 10,000 flyers. Now, I did ring up my son. I got a little bit ticked off with him. Michael Brick. I said, why did you put it so stinking small? Berrytown Football Club. Now, on this side, we had, we had Erdington come in. This is 16th of July. Remember, this is back in March when we designed this. March the 19th. I said, but you put the Grey Goose St. John Centre, which we don't really use, but we're using it. He said, Dad, stop worrying about it. The flyer works. I get a phone call at 4 o'clock. I shared it in the report. You are banned from ever doing a concert again. And we haven't even done the concert yet. And I asked him where he was. He said, I'm in London. I'm on my way back. It's going to take me three hours. We got the keys. We did the concert. Eight got saved. And four, two of them were at com- uh, here. And two of them were watching online because they're special needs. Um, and God moved. And I'm telling you, something happened. Something sparked. I went back to my house. I'm vexed. I told you I get vexed. I sit down with Ben and Marlon and I look at them and I said, guys, what do we do with 9,000 flyers? Chuck them away. Oh, great. So I'm going to send you out one day. I buy all these flyers, 10,000 flyers, and you just turn around to me and say, I'm your sugar daddy, and you're just going to throw them away. He said, well, pastor, what would you do? I said, what would I do? Well, I got hold of a pair of scissors, and I cut the bottom. You can show the other picture now. And I went, there you go. He went, oh, pastor. Pastor, wow, man, Wow. I'll be honest with you, I didn't have a clue what I'd just done. I went, Pastor, you cut the bottom off. Yeah. But the other side since St. John's Center. Yeah. But you've got all these dates on here. This is advertising St. John's. I went, yeah, way, hey, whoa, that's good in closing. So I went to St. John's on Monday morning. I said, listen, man, I need this date. I need, I need um, April the 16th, May the 21st, and 11th of June. The woman goes, okay, I'll be honest with you right now. 11th of June, um, it's got a question mark. Ring them up. She said, okay, I'll ring it up because it's got a question. She rings them up. They've canceled. I'm so happy. We've got it. We've got it. All of a sudden, I turned around and I said, right, now check the, um, the 11th of June and check the uh, 16th of April. And all of a sudden, she goes, I can't. She said, they're booked. I said, well, ring them up. She said, I'm not ringing them up. I said, listen, let me tell you something. My name is Pat Brick. I'll gamble with you right now. I'll I'll do a bet with you right now. I'm not leaving till you ring them up. She said, well, I've got news for you. I'm going lunch. And I said, well, I'm not leaving. She said, you've got to go. I said, I'm not going. All of a sudden, the phone rings. I swear to you. All of a sudden, this woman rings up and goes, "Um, the 11th of June, and we're cancelling. The woman just looks at me like this. She said, I don't know what's happening, right? What's, what, what? Tell me, tell me. She said, you've got the date. To cut a story short, the other person rung up as well. This is a miracle. We're talking a lottery ticket, and they ring through, and they cancel. I've got all the dates. But I've caused the riot. Because in my football club, I'm not allowed to do concerts anymore. I'm banned from concerts. St. John's, I pay them the money up front. We were good. We come to do the um, 16th of April. We do the concert. After that concert, they said, you're not invited back here anymore. The church have decided we don't want churches using our churches anymore. So there's nothing to do with me. There's a spirit here in Berries and Edmonds, and we got banned. But can I tell you, we still had the three concerts with the same flyer, 9,000 left. Even though you cut the bottom, God was still able to move banned from two places, using the same flyer, and revival is breaking out in Bury St. Edmunds. Come on, somebody.
When you get a flat battery, get alongside somebody that can jump start you and be encouraged. With that, let's bow our heads. I did keep to under 40.